Good afternoon, my name is Issa Rita and I'm from Cardiff University in the United Kingdom and today I will talk to you about the intraspecific gene flow and evolution of specialization specifically with regards to the black and the white rhinoceros and to investigate these topics we actually used a comparative genomic analysis. So I will start off with some background information, then I will talk briefly about methods and the results and then some concluding remarks. So to start off with the background, um, here you can see a figure, this is a phylogenetic um, tree that's been drawn by the uh, BEAST um, software and this is based on mitochondrial genomes. So you can see here that the BEAST analysis um, inferred a divergence time between the two white rhinoceros lineages at about 970,000 years ago. And then for um, a divergence time between the white and the black rhinoceros at about 10 million years ago, as you can see here, and the lower and upper bound was between six and 16 million years ago. So I will go come back to this later on, um, but you can clearly see then from this figure that black and white rhinoceros are closely related species. And these sister taxa, they have evolved divergent obligate browsing um, and feeding strategies. So you can see um, in this top left hand picture, it's a picture of a black rhinoceros and they are browsers that feed on leaves, whereas the bottom left picture is actually white rhinoceros and they are obligate grazers, so they generally consume grass, so they feed on grass. So very different feeding strategies, even though these two species are closely related species. Okay, so this then shows a map of the distribution of the species that um, were included in this study. So for the white rhinoceros, um, we had one individual from the northern white population subspecies and also one individual from the southern white um, rhinoceros population. You can see northern white indicated in the blue and the southern white indicated in this red orangey color. And then for the black rhinoceros, we had a representative from the eastern black um, subspecies and then a southern black individual, southern black in yellow and eastern in green. The other thing you can see in this map is actually an indication of fossils that's been found. Um, Pleistocene fossils as well as uh, Pliocene fossils. And um, the two precursor species, precursor species to the modern day um, white and black rhinoceros, you can see here that they appeared in the fossil record at about 5.2 million years ago. And this was basically um, in Ethiopia, you can see that indicated in the gray circle. But then also very important is that we do have sites in the um, fossil record um, that corresponds to today's Rift Valley, where we actually had both these precursor species occurred in sympatry. And you can see that in um, the red circle. And this is a site um, by the name of Kanapoi, and this fossil dates back to about 4 million years. And at this point in time, cranial morphology and stable carbon-13 isotope ratios confirmed that both these precursor species were mixed feeders. So they've not actually developed um, these specializations yet, feeding on leaves or grass exclusively. They were mixed feeders. And so the question could be then, could it be that the precursors were not reproductively isolated when they came into Pliocene secondary contact. And then this actually led us to the research question, were these two precursor species reproductively isolated when they came into um, Pliocene secondary contact? So the question really here was about reproductive isolation and we wanted to see if we could use these genomes and actually study reproductive isolation between these two species, between the black and the white rhinoceros. So in terms of the methods, we um, sequenced the whole genome. This was for a specific individual 
a black rhinoceros individual from South Africa, KwaZulu-Natal. We assembled the genome and we also annotated the genome. We also um, studied pairwise divergences and we estimated divergences. And with those divergences, we converted that um, using some formulas then to actually calculate the mutation rate. And with these pairwise divergences and a mutation rate, we, can recon we could reconstruct a phylogenetic tree, look at the relationships between um, these different species or subspecies that we've actually studied, and we could actually um, date some of the nodes in the tree. We also then um, conducted a lot of simulations PSMC and HPSMC simulations. And those are the only um, results I would talk about today. We've also conducted other simulations, but I will not refer to those analyses today. So then in terms of the actual um, sequence that we've generated, as I said, um, we now have a fully annotated black rhinoceros um, reference genome, and we assembled this um, genome de novo. And this was an individual from South Africa, KwaZulu-Natal. This is a population with the least genetic diversity. So we didn't want to use a too diverse individual. So we actually chose deliberately an individual from KwaZulu-Natal, um, less genetic diversity because the population has gone through a bottleneck quite recently. We um, employed different sequencing strategies and these included two short um, inset DNA libraries uh, 180 base pairs and one 650 base pairs in length. And we also had then three mate pair DNA libraries of three, five, and 20 kilo base fragments in size. These libraries were then sequenced on a Lumina, Illumina High Seek X platform, one lane each for the short insert libraries and one lane for a pool of the three mate um, pair libraries. The reads were then de novo assembled using the all uh, paths pipeline, but then to further improve our reference assembly, we also generated three Chicago libraries from the reference sample at Dovetail Genomics. And then once we had our um, Southern black rhinoceros genome, we then compared this genome um, with actual genomes that are already available um, on databases with an Eastern black and with the two white rhinoceros, one individual from the Northern and one individual from the Southern population. We also compared this to other rhino species, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. I will just focus um, on the four um, subspecies that we've included from South Africa, or from Africa. Okay, so now on to the results. Um, so. Figure A shows the topology of the African um, rhinoceros species. And you can see a very conservative estimate of the split between black and white rhinoceros at the Mayo um, Pliocene boundary was actually estimated using whole genomes. And this was estimated at 5.3 million years ago. Slightly different from what we got with the whole mitochondrial um, genomes there the actual estimate was between six and 16 million years ago. And then within species divergence time um, was anything from 641 to 578,000 years ago um, for the black and for the white rhinoceros respectively. Then figure B actually shows the demographic history um, of both the African species. Um, and we used PSMC modeling to actually um, estimate effective population size and the change of effective population size over time. So you can see here, um, your x-axis is here before present, um, and then your um, y-axis is actually the effective population size. So you can see for both the species, a gradual reduction in population size to less than half of its original size. And the demographic trajectories of both species also um, diverge at 520 and 440 years ago. 520 to 541,000 years ago for the um, black rhinoceros, and then 440 and 460,000 years ago for the um, white rhinoceros. And you can see here in the different colors, um, black rhinoceros in this yellow color, which is the southern um, sample 
and green is the eastern sample. And then for the white rhinoceros, you can see the northern sample in blue and the southern sample in red. Okay. So at this point, then you can see this is indicated in the stars. These um, subspecies then diverge from each other, but this also indicates the end of panmixia within each of the species. And then you see a middle um, Pleistocene population expansion. You can see then here that, you know, the numbers actually increased again. And then, of course, more recent decline in population size. Okay, and this is the H. PSMC results. Basically, what this shows you is that the African rhinoceros only became very productively isolated from each other, those two species, between 3.3 and 4.1 million years ago. Um, and divergence within the white rhinoceros dates back to about 100 to 220,000 years ago. And for the black rhinoceros, um, 30 to 130,000 years ago. And again, it's more or less the same graph, effective population size on the y-axis, and then um, years before present on the um, x-axis. So these um, dates on the x-axis do not actually correspond with the dates that I actually reported here, because we did simulations, and because we knew the actual dates that we've put on these divergences within the simulations, that's why it does not correspond exactly. The thick yellow red line correspond to the actual real data, and then the lighter, the thinner red lines correspond to the simulated data, and then the black lines actually correspond to the simulated data that um, were closest to the actual real data. Okay, then to conclude all of this, so there was an actual um, ancestral species in the Miocene, and this species had an intermediate phenotype, and then it diverged into these two uh, precursor species, Mauritanicum, um, that was the precursor to the actual white rhinoceros, and Priocox, that was a precursor to the black rhinoceros. Um, so they appeared in the fossil record um, during the Pliocene, and there was gene flow, definitely gene flow between these two precursor species, because we know now that there are actual sites where these two precursor species were found in sympatry, um, a site um, such as Kanakoi. So they were mixed feeders, but at about 3.3 million years, um, they became reproductively isolated from each other, and that is actually when these two precursor species then actually started to specialize into what we know today then as the modern white rhinoceros that's a grazer and the black rhinoceros that we know that is a browser. Okay, so the analysis showed that gene flow did occur between the two precursor species and gene flow only ceased between 3.3 and 4.1 million years ago. Um, and this was when the development of the fully specialized browsing and grazing actually started. So the modern day African rhinoceros species could have only occurred after this time. And this really actually then provides a cautionary note to conservation managers not to always interpret times of divergence actually as evidence of the cessation of genetic contact, because there's often still contact between species, secondary contact, there's still gene flow between species, although time of divergence has already started. Two species have already diverged or subspecies have already started to diverge from each other. And I will then end with this um, photograph of um, Sudan. This was the last uh, northern white male rhinoceros and he died um, in March, 2018. And then I would just like to say thank you to all the co-authors, um, especially um, Michael Westbury, He's done most of the actual um, simulation analyses. Um, Love Dolan, he was involved in most of the actual genome sequences and preparing all the libraries. And Yoshin Moodley, Mike Rufit, and myself that wrote the paper, um, interpreted the analyses, and then also dealt with some of the reviewers' comments. Thank you very much.